I just want to talk about my 650 interceptor. Um, it's, it's been a nightmare. Last Wednesday, I was coming back from um, oh, on the A14 back to home, and I was racing against the rain clouds, and uh, I, was, <coughs> I was pushing it along a bit, which is not unusual, and um, without any warning. The engine just locked up, and uh, fortunately it's got a slipper clutch on it, so uh, it didn't lock the back wheel, it just slipped the clutch. But I managed to grab a handful of clutch and coast to a stop, and uh, I thought, what's all this about then? Uh, pulled up on the side of the road, and I could feel the heat on my legs, you know, from the engine, and I thought, oof, dear. So I got it up on the centre stand and uh, took my gloves off and touched the engine. Well, that was a mistake. It was like put, grabbing a hole, hole of a lump of red hot steel. It was absolutely baking, that engine was. Anyway, when I got over that, that shock, um, I grabbed the oil cooler on the, on the front down tubes and the oil cooler was stone cold. And I thought, oh dear, that's not, that's not good. Um, there's no oil going through the cooler. Anyway, I uh, let it cool down for a little while and um, just switched the ignition back on and uh, hit the start the button. Click. That's all I got. And I thought, well, that's not good. That's not good. So I thought, well, I'm stuck. Um, so out come the AA card again and uh, give them a ring. And it was the same guy that turned up that recovered me on my classic 350 when I was uh, got a puncture in the back tyre on the way home from buying it from the dealer, brand new. And uh, he said, oh, hello. He said, oh, I remember you from last time. I said, yeah, I know. He said, he said oh, you, he looked at the bike. He said, you don't have a lot of trouble with Royal, you don't have a lot of luck with Royal Enfields, do you? And I said, well, not the new ones, I don't, not seem to, anyway. Oh, he said, um... What's this one done then? I said, it's, uh, I think the engine seized up. And I said, don't touch it. I said, it's absolutely red hot. You'll burn yourself. Um, and he said, oh dear. And he said, uh, right, well, I'll get the trailer out the back of the van. It's all folded up in the van. We'll assemble that up. And he said, and then uh, we'll get you back home. I was only about six miles away from home, but uh, I wasn't going to push it. Not on the A14. So uh, we got he got me back home and um, now the bike's done t about two thousand seven hundred and forty something miles I think that's not that, from new um, and uh, it's sort of you know it's it's never been right right from day one it's it it, it it had to go back to the dealer and have get a reflash on the ECU because it was stalling if you touch the throttle when you were stopped. To pull away, it was stall. Anyway, the reflash sorted that out, got that sorted out, and that was a lot better after that. Um, anyway, he got me home, and I thought, well, I'm not doing anything with this. I, I, there's nothing I can do. I said, I'll just leave it now and just let it cool down overnight, and have a look at it in the morning. It's starting to get dark anyway. Um, next morning, got up, engine was cold, uh, pulled it up on the centre stand. Looked at uh, the oil level. The oil level was there, right between the two marks, like it should be. Oil didn't look dirty at all. I said, I mean, said, I've used sort of quality oil. It's uh, silkaline, fully synthetic, and a genuine Royal Enfield oil filter. Anyway, I checked over everything. Couldn't really see anything really. Switch ignition on. Did the dial sweep. Press the start button. Click. I thought, are you going to start? So I thought, oh, I don't know. Uh, of course, you've got no kickstart or anything. So uh, I took the plug out, the timing cover, which uh, gives you access to the end of the crank. I've got a socket on there and a breaker bar, and I couldn't move that engine. That was completely and utterly stuck. Couldn't move it forwards or backwards. Couldn't move it at all. So I thought, oh dear. 
So I phoned the dealer up. The dealer said, "Well, you know, you need to, your first port call is uh, Royal Enfield." And I said, "Well, hang on a minute." I said, "I bought it from you." And uh, he said, "Yeah, I know, but he said with something as serious as that, he said you need to talk to Royal Enfield." He said, "I'll give you all the numbers." So he gave me the numbers, and I phoned up, and I got a, a guy, a nice guy on the phone, and. Uh, I explained exactly what had happened with the bike and uh, he said, well, I've never heard of anything like this. He said, not with an intercept and not, not R650. I said, well, I can assure you it has. I said, because the oil cooler was stone cold and the engine was absolutely baking. And he said, uh, whereabouts are you? And I said, I'm just outside Ipswich. And he said, um, your closest dealer then would be Colchester Kawasaki, wouldn't it? And I said, yes. And I, but I didn't buy it from them. I said, I bought it from a dealer uh, up in Norwich. And he said, yeah, okay. Well, look, I'm, give me five minutes. I'll call you back. Uh, it, I said, I've just got to clarify something. I said, right, okay. And he said, phone me back. And he did. He kept his word. And he said, we need to get the bike uh down to our main department really and I said yeah okay well when do you want to do that then he said um, I'll have to call you back again in five minutes he said I'll, and I'll, I'll work something out and he, sure enough just a couple of three minutes he phoned me back and he said we can collect the bike um, on Friday morning at about 10 o'clock and I said yeah fine he said we've got an address there and I said yeah name all the rest of it gave him all the details sure enough Friday morning they turned up with the van and uh, loaded it up and um, I took it away uh, the driver gave me a phone number he said phone this guy and asked to speak to Derek I think that's what his name was Derek and he said uh, he might be able to give you an update in the morning because he still have the bike then anyway so anyway he took the bike i phoned the number the next morning saturday morning and uh asked for derek and got this guy anyway and he said uh right we got the bike he said we've looked at it uh he said we've partially stripped stripped the engine he said it is definitely seized um i said well he was just asking me questions about the oil and things and when it was last changed. I said, well, you know, it's not due for a not, it's second oil change. Yeah, I said, it's only going 2,700 miles. Um, told him I was using silkaline oil and everything. And he said, well, we can't get the cylinder barrels off. And I said, why not? He said, because the pistons are actually <laughs> welded themselves to the bores. I said, oh, my God. And he said, um, we can't turn the crank either so we reckon that the big ends have actually welded themselves to the, the in the rods so instead of welded themselves into the onto the crank so it's not looking good he says also we the cause is the oil uh, pump drive chain has snapped and i said has it and he said yeah he said it's snapped and uh the oil pump still spins freely there's nothing wrong with the oil pump, as we can see. <coughs> he said, but it snapped the chain for some reason. So he said, we need to talk to uh, the factory. Uh, he says, it's uh, it's serious. I said, have you got a timeline for all this? I said, how long is this going to take? And he said, I can't give you a timeline. He said, it all depends on Royal Enfield. And I said, OK, well, can you keep me updated? and uh he said yeah not, not a problem anyway he called uh this morning and said that um right he said we've given up trying to strip the engine he said we've got the primary side off and the timing cover off and all the cams out and everything and he said and um it's we just can't get the barrels off he said uh it's absolutely locked up solid uh royal enfield want the engine back out of the frame and it says we've got to give it to them and they're going to make a decision what they're going to do 
And I said, well, it's definitely warranty, isn't it? He said, oh, yeah, it's definitely warranty. So, I mean, it's, a, it's only just over a year old, isn't it? I said, yeah. I said, but the thing is, I said, I'll, I'll use that bike. I said, you know, and I haven't got a bike at the moment. He said, well, you know, that, that again, he said, is down to Royal Enfield. He said, I, I can't authorise them to lend you a bike. So, um, it's, you know, you've got to just sort of, uh, we'll, we'll work with that and, and we'll keep you posted on that. And I thought, I hope you didn't see my YouTube channel because you see how many bikes I've got, but there we are. Anyway, so that's the sorry story behind that. Looks like I'm going to get a new engine because uh, I told him, I said, I'm not having that engine rebuilt. I said, that is the end of that one. And he said, I don't think we can rebuild it. He said, I don't think it's possible to rebuild it. He said, well, Royal Enfield wouldn't do that anyway because you'd have to have oversized pistons and all the rest of it. And he said, so, um, he said, off the record, he said, I think you'll get a new engine. He said, well, I said, either that or a new bike. And he said, I don't know if I'd give you a new bike. He said, but, well, they'll sort the engine for you. And he said, and I'll keep you updated. So that's as far as we've got. So it's a sorry old state. I've checked all the forums and everything. I can't see any reference to any anybody else having this problem with an interceptor 650. I mean, they're supposed to be fairly robust, and uh, it just looks like it's just a, a Friday afternoon bike, I reckon. You know, it's just a, a, a bad chain. I mean, it's tiny chain in there. It's not very big. So, that it's... Uh, that's another sorry story. I mean, my last video was a sorry story, but I have got an update on that last video. Um, that's not all as bad as it, it sounds. Uh, I've found a solution to it. And uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to tell you everything I'm going to do to it, but uh, it will live, that bike. It won't be scrapped. Uh, it is in lumps at the moment, but uh, it has been cut, uh, rendered down. But nothing that can't be reversed but uh anyway i'll keep you updated on that one that'll probably be maybe a next the next video or even the video after that so i just thought i'd give you a, just an update really of um what what's going on with this interceptor you know it's uh didn't expect this on a brand new bike but there we are you live and learn so anyway, there we go. Um, so enjoy the rest of your day, evening, morning, wherever you are with it. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Bye-bye.